All right, well, folks, we are uh, currently aboard the Cape May Ferry. It is 8.30 in the morning, and we dock in Lewes, Delaware in about an hour and a half. We've got a roof rack full of fishing rods, a cooler full of bait, and uh, a day full of fishing. This is not really a far journey. We've only got about a 12 minute straight shot across the Delaware Bay, but this boat obviously does not go too fast with all this weight on it. So to the total journey end up taking us about an hour and a half and I'm already about halfway there. I'm just gonna take a quick walk around the boat, see if I can find anything cool. And I do wanna give a big shout out to Magnarack for sponsoring this trip. More on that later. Very bacon, egg, and cheese review on an English muffin. Interesting. Totally forgot I got bird shit on my hands earlier today. Clean that up before we get salmonella. Oh, pretty good. I mean, can't expect that much from a four dollar seventy-five cent sandwich on a ferry, but not bad. Also picked up a uh, cup of joe. Gonna need some energy for the send today. Been a long day so far. It's only 9.30. Folks, so a couple hours later, made it to the fishing pier where we're going to be spending the next couple hours, hopefully, slaying some fish. But before we get all rigged up and walk out to the pier, I do want to give a special thank you and a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Magnarack, the company that makes this magnetic rod rack that is currently on my truck. So, a couple months ago, I recently purchased my own F 150. I was looking for some rod rack options for the roof of my truck because having them in the bed here can be pretty dangerous, especially when you got other stuff, rods could break, snap, things could fly out. And honestly, it's just not the safest option. So while I was looking around for a rod rack, I stumbled upon this company here, Magnarack, which makes this magnetic roof rack case. And while it's not currently on top of my F-150, it is on top of my dad's Ford Ranger. And uh, that's only because F-150 is now after 2015 are uh, not made out of steel, they're made out of aluminum. So unfortunately they're not magnetic, but they did send me a kit that will fit on top of some crossbars that I'm gonna mount to the top of my truck very soon. But honestly, I wish I could use the magnetic version because I have zero complaints about this so far. I just planned this trip a couple of days ago and really did not give myself any time at all to pack. So it took me no more than 30 seconds to mount this on top of the roof here. All I had to do was get a rag, kind of clean up the roof here and literally just place the carry case on top here and i was in quite a rush this morning thought i was going to miss the ferry i didn't even look how to mount the rods in here but as you can see it's a very simple construction the rods mount perfectly inside here and you can velcro them down i just kind of unvelcroed them because i was getting rigged up on the ferry it has enough room for three you know medium heavy rods here i could put some heavy surf rods in here if i want honestly any rod style as long as it's not too light it should fit and uh, as far as the, the safety of this thing while you're driving I was absolutely cooking down the parkway this morning because I thought I was gonna miss the ferry. And uh, this thing held up to 90 mile an hour speeds, even though they only recommend driving up to 70, I believe on their website. So obviously a product I'm excited to promote. If you guys wanna check out Magnarack for yourself, if you have 
a smaller sedan or something where you don't really have rod storage, this is definitely the perfect solution for you. So with that being said, if you wanna check this out for yourself, I'll put a little discount code in the description below. Again, a huge shout out to Magnarack for sponsoring this video, hooking me up with the rod case that I'm excited to put on my F-150. I'm gonna grab the rods out of my Magnarack here, get rigged up, start my trek out to the pier, and uh, should have an awesome day of fishing, folks. Stay tuned. Really just such a simple, ingenious product here. That's always nice to support a, uh, a small business too. Owners are very, very nice people. And if you worry about anybody trying to steal it here, there is a cable that they send you that'll go through here and then connect to a mounting bracket that you can mount over your door here. That way no one can steal your rod case or your rods. But just packing it pretty simple today. Three rods, cooler, backpack. Got about a thousand foot walked out to the pier. Got about my fishing license, some ice for the fish we're hopefully gonna catch. And uh, that's gonna be a send, baby. I'm just gonna, I need to buy a fishing license and some ice. Fishing license? Yeah. You can either, I mean, we can do it on an iPad, but we don't do it uh, physically anymore. I can do it online, I guess? Yep. All right, perfect. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, good luck. Thanks, guys. All right, and I do have to buy my fishing license here. Just in case we get checked. Here in the state of Delaware. Delaware fishing license. All right, got my license, let's fish. All right, folks, just made it out. It's about midway through the pier here. It is uh, pretty crowded for a Monday, but it is the summer, so that's to be expected. Got maybe 50 yards to go to the tip, but uh, just gonna be doing some really, really simple fishing here, just kind of relaxing for a couple hours till my ferry leaves at 2.45. But I'm just gonna do some light tackle bait fishing here. Now before I left this morning, I made sure to pick up some fresh bloodworms from back home at Riptide Bait and Tackle. We've got about a dozen and a half of these absolute candy worms that are gonna be a snack for honestly whatever swims out here. So it's gonna break off maybe an inch piece there, another inch piece here, and uh, in terms of the technique for the day, it's gonna be fishing some high-low rigs right here. Small circle hooks that we're gonna thread our piece of bloodworm on. There's the first setup of the day, fishing this on a 4500 Shimano Bait Runner 7.6 Tsunami Carbon Shield. First cast going out. Bomb that out there about 25 yards or so. And second rod of the day gonna be Pretty much the same exact rig, just some smaller hooks, lighter one ounce weight on our lighter setup over here. Take some small piece of bloodworm, hook those up again. All right, and fishing this high low rig here on our 7.6 St. Croix Mojo Inshore with a 2500 Daiwa BG, which uh, no longer runs so smoothly after our last couple surf fishing trips. Still works, doesn't sound too pretty, so. There we are, first two rods out. Again, very simple fishing here. Already getting bit. Just uh, just gonna be baiting and waiting, looking for spot, croaker, uh, maybe some, some kingfish, AKA whiting, if they wanna roam around. Literally just whatever bites you off the pier. Got a couple hours to kill. Hopefully a bunch of fish to catch. Stay tuned. Should be a fun day doing some summer pier fishing. Just got smoked. <laughs> Didn't take long. We are first fish of day, little spot. That's awesome. Uh, it's a little spot. You want to hold it? What are you fishing with? Uh, blood worms. Awesome. Got our bite here. One rod right in, doubled up. That is a, I don't know, a grunt, I think. 
Oh, he's a pretty. Yeah, look at the shiny. Is. Oh, look how pretty. Look at the colors on Hernanigan's picture. He's a pretty Oh, wow. One. This guy will send back. There we go. Second species. Okay. Little grunt right there. Oh, okay. There you do. Two casts, two fish, two species. Thank you for sharing. No problem. Took a trip maybe 60 miles south and I'm catching fish. I only ever caught before in Florida. That was pretty cool. I think that was a grunt. Don't know what uh, don't know what uh actual species, but dope. Two fish, two casts. My burping through these blood worms faster than I thought. I'm gonna cast this rod a little closer to the pier, see if we can get something different. There he is. Oh, no way. Mega spot. All right, biggest fish today. It's like a six inch spot right there. <laughs> Don't always have to cast super far out. That guy was probably two feet away from the pier. Load him up. Got one right next to the pier. What about underneath? Oh. <laughs> oh wow, look at that dude. <laughs> That is unreal, I just caught that. That's the biggest freaking shiner I've ever seen in my life. Oh, no idea what we just caught. I think it's a big Atlantic silver side there. Gnarly looking fish. I don't, I'll do a species out of you later, but look at that mouth. That's crazy. All right, well, these guys are very delicate. He obviously wasn't gonna survive anyway, so I'm gonna keep him for bait, I guess. Maybe give him someone on the pier. That's sick looking. Wow. I believe I hooked that thing. You guys uh, want to use this for bait? I, I just caught this. I don't know what the hell it is. Some type of silver side. But it looks to like be good for bait. All right, thank you. I'm just trying to catch small fish, but if there's a flounder around, I probably would eat that. All right, thank you. No problem, man. Good luck. Getting plenty of bites underneath the pier here, but nothing big enough. It seems I kind of just like snagged that guy in the mouth, I guess. I'm sure, there are some bigger fish underneath there, but we're just getting absolutely chewed up by whatever else is swimming around. So just going to cast this guy a couple feet out. Uh, yeah. See what else swims by. Three fish though, three different species. Definitely a good start to the send so far. There's a bite. Oh. Got him. Micro, whatever it is, he's on there. It's another spot, looks like. Yep. Another little cookie cutter size spot. Perfect bait size. We still got our bait, crazy. Got him. Another spot. By far the most common catch out here. Little tiny spot, decent size one for the day. All right, let's get some more blood worms out there. Just keep them one rod far, one rod close. That spread seems to be doing me pretty good getting bit here you know, at least every couple minutes. All right, so we're approaching the early afternoon over here. The bite seemed to slow down just a little bit from what it was earlier. Just getting bit almost every cast. So uh, instead of just letting our rod sit here, wait for the fish to come to us. So I'm just going to cast out, but this time I'm going to reel it in slow. Just kind of try to cover some more ground on the bottom. And uh, hopefully it's a ticket to get bait a little quicker here. Oh, damn it. Missed him. There he is. <laughs> Little spot. <laughs> yep. All right, that took about one cast. And uh, still got our bait. Little maybe. A little cookie cutter spot there. Toss awesome in the box. Had a bunch more species when we first got here, but it looks like it's mostly just spot now. Oh, it's got bit. There he is. Another little spot. Sweet. Get 
Yeah, buddy. Um, what are your, what's the times after that? Is it every hour and a half? We have it at 2.45, so there's a 4.15, 6.15, or 7.45. Um, I will do the 6.15. All right, thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, so far picked up a couple small spot, one little pig fish, and some weird shiner thing. But a spot opened up here at the end of the pier, decided to march down maybe 60 yards. Got a lot more structure here behind me that could be holding some more exotic fish. Just canceled my 245 reservation and I postponed it to 615 for there on the ferry. So uh, got plenty more time to fish now. Let's give it a dangle, see what we can get. Uh oh. No bueno. <laughs> it looks like a storm did some serious damage here and just got a lot of empty pilings that could be holding some sheep's head, trigger fish. Even got a report from the tackle shop. There were some spade fish caught here, which is a species I've never caught before. So that'd be sick to catch. See what we can do. There's a bite, there's a bite. Got him. Feels like a bigger spot, maybe a double header here. But nothing crazy. Pick the perfect setup to try to catch these guys on this thing slight enough. They actually get a bit of a fight out of them. Way there at the end of the cast. Well, that's a different fish, is it? That's a little croaker, sweet. New species for the day. All right, quick move to the end of the pier. Looks like it paid off. Not with anything huge, but something a little bit different. Little uh, Atlantic croaker there. Probably hear that. That's why they call them a croaker. Sweet. That would be a absolute money big red fish or striper bait if they were any around, but I don't really feel like putting this guy out there. Probably get sharked if anything. So into the cooler he goes. Add into our frozen bait stash. Sweet. Those guys are actually pretty good eating too. If you get one big enough, wouldn't eat one that small, but something over 10 inches, definitely could fit in a pan. Send this back out to that guy bit way at the end of the cast. All the way past those pylons. Got him. What do we got here? Doesn't feel as big as that croaker. Got a little more weight to him. Looks like a little spot. A little pigfish? Yeah, not a pigfish. I don't catch these up north. Not really. I'll let these guys go. I've kept like everything else. These are the rarest thing I've caught all day, so. On again. Oh, you know what? That might be perfect bait size. Is that a little croaker? Oh, so close. Gotta be eight inches to keep her. That would be a perfect, perfect bait though. Maybe a little big, but send it back. Dope. I like to either catch a small spot, big croaker, but it's a third fish here off the tip. There we go, on again. I had to shut the camera off, it's getting a little hot out here, the sun's out and blaring. I don't see any of those thunderstorms they were calling for, so. Didn't want the camera to overheat. What do we got here? Uh, another little pig fish. Debatable size to use for bait here, but probably a little too big for these Delaware flounders. There's a bite. That guy smoked it. I don't think it's anything crazy. All right, first fish on the sabiki here. What do we got? Looks like a spot. Right, a little croaker. That guy will probably keep there. Give a quick measure. Right, he's like seven and like 63, 64 fourths. But I'm gonna let that guy go. Got enough fish in the box anyway. Cool little guy. See a croaker. Got him. Doubled up. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's a good croaker there now. Got myself a pig fish. All right, another little pig fish here. Looks like we might have maxed out our species. 
Cool little guy. Cool colors on him. See ya, dude. Oh my god. That's a fish right there, whatever that is. Just got wrecked. What do we got here? Nice croaker. What do we got? Hopefully something new or bigger. It's got a big spot. Snagged in someone's line. Croaker. Oh, come on off there. Oh my God, just broke me off. Oh, snagged someone else's line. That was a nice, nice croaker. Bummer. Fishing send back aboard the ferry. Huge shout out to Magarap again for hooking us up with this trip here. I, uh, I had a great day of summer summer pier fishing, something I really do not often do just because there's not that many fishing piers in New Jersey. But I'm going to call it here. I am absolutely exhausted, as you can imagine. I'm aboard the 615 ferry after I canceled my 245. Now, now that extra time in the sun is absolutely wiped me out so i'm gonna call it here folks thanks for tuning in this video hopefully you enjoyed the set it's a little bit different than normal just doing some chill summer fishing and uh caught a bunch got a bunch of bait for another video down the pipeline just some easy simple summer fishing i cannot wait to get home get a shower get some food in me get hydrated and go to friggin sleep so uh that being said folks i'll see you in the next one never end the set baby Woo!